Each week on Wednesday, our devotions have been coming from the same section of God's Word, from Isaiah chapter 9. We'll read again, verses 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is God's word. Dear friends of Jesus, on Christmas night, the angels sang out to the shepherds, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. That idea of peace is probably the most popular theme when it comes to Christmas. There are so many songs and poems and commercials all about peace and maybe especially today when we sense so much division and bitterness and lines drawn on every side, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Does that sound nice? Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. We love to hear about peace at Christmas. So we should pay attention to what Jesus says about peace. To share with you what the angels said about peace on Christmas night. Do you, do you know what Jesus says about peace? Later on in that same Gospel of Luke, we hear this from Jesus. He says, Do you think I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be division in a family. Five will, will be divided. Three against two and two against three. Do you hear those words from Jesus very often? Jesus says, if, if you want to think about peace, then you've got to know this. I did not come to bring peace on earth. In fact, the more that you believe in me, the less peace you're going to have with other people. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. That's what Jesus said. Don't you want to say, what's the deal? So is Jesus the Prince of Peace or not? If we want to know what the Bible means when it calls Jesus the Prince of Peace, do you know where we should look? In the Bible. Somebody's listening. In the Bible. There's a verse from the Bible that I think every Christian should memorize. It's John 16, verse 33. And there, on the night before he died, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Notice how Jesus puts it. He says, I taught you my word. I told you these things so that you may have peace in me. Jesus absolutely came to bring us peace. In this world, however, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus came to bring us peace. But Jesus wants us to know that in this broken, sin-filled world, we're going to have lots of trouble so what's this peace that Jesus came to bring? Jesus brings a, a peace greater than not arguing with your kids or with your spouse. Jesus brings a peace greater than people in a country getting along with each other. Jesus brings a peace greater than making all the wars around the world cease. Jesus came to bring you and I peace with God. From the time that Adam and Eve sinned against God, there's been a war between human beings and God. And maybe you can't see the bombs exploding, but in your heart you can feel it. That guilt that gnaws at you. The regret that weighs down your soul. The fear of death. The fear of God that hides beneath the surface. Since Adam and Eve sinned, there's been a war between God and human beings until the Prince of Peace came. Now, if Jesus was going to bring us peace, he needed to remove the thing that caused the war. What caused the war between us and God? 
sin. So what did Jesus need to remove? Sin. Jesus took our sins away when he died on the cross. That's why the Bible says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus, because he took those sins away, we have peace with God. So the verse in the Bible that says, Now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 15. This is what the angels were talking about on Christmas night. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. There is peace for the people of God because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. But that doesn't mean there's always going to be peace between people. Just think about Jesus' own life. Even as a little baby, Jesus and his parents had to flee for their lives. Remember why? King Herod slaughtered all the little baby boys in Bethlehem. When he grew up, Jesus was crucified on a cross. And he tells you and I to expect that same division in our lives. If you believe that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life that separates you from people who reject Jesus. That's why both the angels and Jesus are, are telling the truth, of course. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. There is peace. Do you think I came to earth to bring peace? No, I tell you, but division. And there's division. It's both. It makes me think of the Christmas song, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. You heard that song before? I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. It's not a song that I remember ever learning or singing as a kid. But lately I've been hearing it all the time. It goes something like this. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Right, the Christmas bells are ringing this message of peace. It's just what we want to hear. Do you know how the song continues? It says, But in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. This isn't your average happy Christmas carol. Is it? Now the bells are ringing, peace, peace, peace. And yet life is shouting out, there's no peace. In fact, hate is strong. Hate is so strong that it mocks the song. Hate says, peace on earth. That's a joke. Is that the truth? Bells ringing, peace. Life shouting, there is no peace. Because hate is strong. Do you know who wrote that song? Or when it was written? I don't know. Did you say Longfellow? Yeah, you're right. I just looked it up. It was written on Christmas Day, 1863, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. You hear that name and there's this little thing in the back of your mind that says, I probably should know something about him, but I don't remember anything. It's a famous American poet that you must have learned about at some point in your life. Longfellow and he wrote that song on Christmas Day, 1863. Now what was happening in America in 1863? Civil War. In fact, the very month before, November 1863, Longfellow's own son was severely wounded in a battle. Can you imagine celebrating Christmas in the middle of the Civil War? The bells would be ringing, right? But in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. But that's not where the song ends. It has a number of different verses. One of the last verses goes like this. But then the bells peal loud and clear. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, goodwill to men. There was still hope, even in the midst of the carnage of the Civil War, there was still hope. What was the hope? God is not dead, nor does he sleep. 
This is the peace the, the angels are singing about. This is what Jesus, the Prince of Peace, came to bring. It's, it's not that all troubles are going to be gone. It's that God is not dead, nor does he sleep. God's presence is here with us, no matter what's going on on the outside. No matter what's happening in your life, the greatest war has already been won. When Jesus won the victory for us on the cross, everything else pales in comparison to what Jesus has done for us. There is peace for the people of God because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That's the peace that Jesus came to bring. It doesn't mean that all your troubles will be gone. Instead, it means that you can have real peace even in the midst of all the struggles. If you get called up to fight in a real war, you know that the greatest war is already over. Jesus took all of our sins away. Even if you have conflict in your relationships, you can know that the greatest relationship is perfect. There's nothing now that stands between you and God. Your identity doesn't come from what other people say, what other people think. It doesn't come from what you do. It comes from what Jesus has done for you. There's peace because of the Prince of Peace. Once heard a story about two rival painters who decided to have a competition between the two of them. And the competition was which one of the two could draw a better picture of peace? Now you think about it, that's kind of a hard thing to draw, right? It's not a thing, it's this concept. How do you draw a picture of peace? Well, the first painter drew a beautiful mountain scene and right in the middle of the mountains, there's this perfectly calm lake. Can you imagine that? Peace. But he didn't win. The other painter painted a steep, rocky cliff. And over the cliff is plunging this violent waterfall. The sky is cloudy and dark and ominous. And you can tell that there's wind whipping around. And at the base of this rocky cliff is a big dead tree. And one of the branches on this big dead tree is hanging over in front of this thundering waterfall. And on the dead branch of this dead tree, there's a little bird's nest. And in that little bird's nest is a little bird perfectly at peace. That's peace. In the middle of all the chaos of our world in the manger, there is peace. But Jesus' words, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, this ancient prophecy from Isaiah gives you the title Prince of Peace. Yeah, as we look around our world, peace is sure hard to find. Even when we read your own words, you tell us to expect trouble and division in our lives. And you make us this big promise. The promise that you've removed our sin and you've given us peace with God. Dear Jesus, may your peace, which transcends all understanding, may your peace be what guards and keeps our hearts and minds in you, our Savior, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, as we celebrate your birth this coming weekend, in the midst of the chaos of our world, even in the midst of the troubles of our lives, help us to find true peace in you. In your name we pray. Amen.